let you do the motor pass more. You'll have it. Okay. Okay. This is the last thing in the world that I ever thought would happen to him. I came to Philadelphia on December the 13th to go to the Army-Navy game on December the 14th. We were at breakfast and my best friend was sitting across from me and he said, uh, you're having a stroke. He saw I was drooling my coffee and my water out of my side of my mouth and I was leaning over to my other buddy on him. I was literally shocked at how weak he was. He couldn't even sit up. The stroke affected my whole left side, left side of my face. My left eye has a vision cut, which I can only see partly out of. My right eye had a stroke in the optic nerve, and my right eye is blind. It affected his strength, it affected his balance, it affected his just ability to plan out his movements. Um, it um, even affected some of his kind of thinking skills and problem solving, but with the help of speech therapy and all of our programs here, he's come just such a long way, it's amazing. So today we were working on a lot of just functional mobility tasks, um, including um, training with his wife so that when he leaves here, he's prepared to move around safely within his home. So that includes getting in and out of bed, getting up and down the stairs, being able to um, even just get in and out of the car to get to his outpatient therapy. And my wife's been there through it all. So we are going to practice getting into the shower. Doing the therapy in the beginning was a lot of observing and kind of just taking it all in, but listening to what they're doing because knowing eventually he's going to go home. It was scary because you're like, I don't know if I can do this. All the therapists are so encouraging and so um, loving. When he first came here, despite the things that he had going against him with the deficits, he just wanted to work hard, come early, leave late from therapy every single day. The therapists are just world class. They know just enough to push me to hard enough to get what done what needs to be done. And they're amazing people. They just, they make you feel confident. They make you feel good about what you're doing. While I know his daughter and his sons and everything are preparing everything at home for him, um, and then she's here to um, guide him, assist him, motivate him. When you love someone as much as I love him, you know, you're going to do anything you can to help him get his life back to who he was. They are so patient with each other, so supportive of each other, and they constantly are just making sure that the other one is okay through this whole process. Isaac, who just turned 10, I've got great uh, support with my family. We got married August 20th, 1977, so this year it'll be 43 years. Our daughter Katie was diagnosed with leukemia when she was 15, and she had a, a uh, side effect from one of the chemotherapies she was on. It's called she suffered a stroke when she was 16. So this is like deja vu in some respects. I have two angels, one angel in heaven and one angel here on earth, my beautiful bride. We've all commented on the love that they have for each other, and I think it's really um, assisted in his recovery so much, the fact that she's been here and been so devoted to him. In some ways, we'll look back at these days as precious memories. Living in this little room together, you know, eating our meals, revolving our day around therapies as what a bonding moment. When you love someone unconditionally, it's not a job, it's an honor. We're going to make a great turn. It's been phenomenal. Um, I can't say enough about what McGee's done for us. Looking forward to a great recovery back in Traverse City, Michigan. He's made unbelievable progress. That's our goal, to just keep him moving forward. That's just what you do for anybody you love.